Here we are again together uh, during this quarantine time. We're here to worship God and to receive strength from the Holy Spirit. Let's just pray together right now. Father, thank you, God, for what we are going to say, what going to transpire. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the church. I pray that every person that's a part of this body will feel strength tonight in the Holy Ghost. I pray that you'll minister to us and send your power and your presence in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. When I was praying about what to give to you tonight on this Thursday evening, I felt so strongly the Lord give me this message that will be a source of encouragement and strength to you. And it's on the Pentecostal secret weapon. The Pentecostal secret weapon. And it's found in John chapter 16. Jesus talks about it himself. And uh, he starts here in verse 5 and says, I, I tell you now, I'm going away to him who sent me. And none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I've said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. I will send him to you. The Pentecostal secret weapon is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit in a dimension and in a way that other people that even may know the Lord may not have it because when God fills you with his Holy Spirit, his tongues of the Holy Spirit flows through us. And the Bible says that we speak mysteries to our God. The early church received power and authority through the power of the Holy Spirit and praying in tongues. And this is a strategic advantage that God has given to his church. And I believe it's time right now for us as a church to take advantage of our strategic advantage. Thank God we know what the Holy Spirit is. Thank God every week when we come together as a church, there's prayer in tongues openly and above board and out in front. People praying in the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit in operation, messages in tongues, interpretation, prophecy, uh, gifts of knowledge and wisdom that flow right here in this church. Thank God that we have the advantage, the strategic advantage of the Holy Spirit. And we want to utilize that because we're isolated physically, though not spiritually. And we, are, we feel hemmed in and we have all this apprehension and uncertainty. And it certainly is a time of, of question. But in the middle of all of this, the Holy Spirit is our rear guard, our front guard, our guard on the left and our guard on the right. And so tonight I want to challenge us. And at the end of this little Bible lesson, I'm going to challenge us all to pray together in the Holy Spirit. And we're going to just spend some few minutes here praying in the Holy Ghost because it's not enough to come and hear a message or some encouraging words from a pastor. You need more than just my voice speaking to you tonight. You're facing some real things. And maybe some of you are going through some real big, heavy trials financially or or physically, but right now the Holy Spirit is more available than it ever to any time because He sees the need, He knows our hearts, He knows the heaviness, and that's what His specialty is. He came to give us God's supernatural strength. Amen. You know, when we pray in tongues, we take up the authority of Jesus Christ. He gave us authority, but when we pray in tongues, we take up that authority. It's one thing to have that authority granted to you. It's another thing to pick it up and to use it. It's another thing to, to, to utilize the authority that the Holy Spirit gave to us. And when we pray in tongues, we are praying with God's authority. Jesus said, nothing will be impossible to you. He said, you can tread on serpents and scorpions. You can cast out devils. You can heal the sick. All of these things come through the Holy Spirit and the authority that Jesus granted unto us. You have that authority, but you don't pick it up until you pray in the Spirit. And when you pray in tongues, the Holy Ghost rises up with that authority inside your life. It's high time for the church 
to be unashamed and unapologetic for the Holy Spirit. It's time that we embrace the Holy Spirit with all of his goodness and with all of his correction, with all of his guidance and with all of his conviction. We want to embrace the Holy Spirit. The church has got to get away from Sesame Street and go back to Azusa Street. It's time to go back and embrace the power of God. And it's time for us to quit sitting around feeling sorry for ourselves with our head down staring at our navel. We need to lift up our head. We need to lift up our heart. We need to lift up our voice to God and declare that God is the king of our lives and that the Holy Spirit is resonant within us. Paul said to Timothy, stir up the gift of God that is within you. The Holy Spirit's in you, but you've got to stir it up. Stir up that authority and stir up that prayer in tongues. And you'll find that your head gets lifted, your heart gets lifted, your attitude changes, confidence comes, joy comes, and the deep peace that only Jesus gives comes as we utilize prayer in tongues. Amen. Only, the only truly effective way to pray, as described in Romans chapter 8 by Paul, is to pray in tongues. You know, a lot of people quote these verses right here, and they misquote them. For, for, uh, they, they say, for when we do not know what to pray for as we ought, then the Holy Spirit comes. But it, it doesn't say that. It says, for we do not know. It doesn't say when we do not know. It just says bla bla blankly, we do not know. Matter of fact statement. We do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit prays through us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And the Holy Spirit makes us effective. He knows what the needs are. He knows who needs to be touched. He knows exactly what's going on in the heart of every person. He knows what's going on in the spirit world. He knows what we need to tie into. And he does that automatically as we pray, giving ourselves over to the Holy Spirit, praying in the language of heaven. Amen. And so I challenge you tonight. I challenge you to lock into the Holy Spirit. This is our special advantage this is our secret weapon, saints of God. Let's, let's lock in on it tonight and let's get strong. Let's get bold. Let's get forceful. Let's get our peace back. Amen. You know, I find myself even during this time when we've been down and isolated, I find myself praying in tongues almost all day. I just feel the Holy Spirit just lingering in my heart. I feel him whispering to me. I find myself just praying more than ever and giving utterance to the Holy Spirit as he gives me guidance and as he gives me utterance in the Spirit. I just believe that the Holy Spirit is taking us and guiding us. Though we're flying blind, as it were, the Holy Spirit is guiding us and taking us. You know, when you fly an airplane, there's two ways to fly it. One is VFR and one is IFR. VFR is visual flight rules where you can see the horizon and see the ground and you can fly accordingly. But when you're in the soup or when you're in the, in the clouds and you can't see the ground, then you get disoriented and you have to fly instruments and you have to depend on those instruments to get you through those clouds because you get disoriented, you lose your equilibrium, and you don't know where you are. That's where we are right now. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know when this is going to be over. They're talking about, you know, the first part of next month, but who knows how long it will be. But I don't know that, but I do know a God that will carry me through. That Holy Spirit will give me the inspiration and the strength and the guidance to go through this in a successful way. Hallelujah. There was a plague on the land of Egypt. There was darkness. There were frogs. The water turned to blood, but there was no plague 40 miles to the north in Goshen where God's people were. There was no darkness. There were no plagues. And I can tell you that we live under an umbrella of Holy Spirit. God constituted power and the Holy Spirit. Our house is different. Our home is different. Our cars are different. Our lives are different because we're walking under that envelope of the power of God Almighty. So I want to encourage you to find yourself praying more than ever. I know you got the time. I know you're on lockdown. 
I know you don't have much to fill your day with. I challenge you to let the Holy Spirit fill you and bring you through perfectly clear on this path that God has ordained. Amen. I believe the first job that the Holy Spirit does whenever we begin to seek the Lord and we let the Holy Ghost flow through us and our mouth is filled with praise and tongues, I, I, I don't know how it works with you, but the first thing that happens to me is the Holy Ghost lifts burdens off of my heart. You know, he lifts those heavy burdens and he gives me peace and he gives me joy and he gives me confidence. And I believe this is the first job of the Holy Spirit for God's people. When we begin to pray in tongues, we put on the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Notice it's a spirit of heaviness. Amen. It's not just a psychological condition. It's a spirit that you're battling that's trying to oppress you and put out there the worst case scenario and, and hit you on all sides. So what's your answer? Put on the garment of praise. And it's something that you do on purpose. It's something that you have to do without anyone helping you because you're not able to come and hear the morning worship and, and come to the Bible studies and be here physically. But we're here together tonight spiritually. And the Holy Spirit is here to minister to us tonight and to release the spirit of heaviness because we put on the garment of praise. This coat didn't just jump on me today. I put it on. And God's power is not going to just jump on you. You put on the spirit of praise and begin to worship God. And then the prayer language begins to flow. And then God begins to move into your life. So put on the Holy Spirit. Put on the praises of God. Amen. I love Ephesians 2.10 where Paul says, We are his workmanship that God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God knew this day was coming. God has, has ordained victory. And he's made a way for his people because we are his workmanship. And God has prepared a place, a way for us beforehand that we should walk in them, but I still have to walk in it. God ordained it. God prepared it, but I have to walk in it. Every day I have to choose. Do I pray in the Spirit today or do I sit around and feel sorry for myself? Do I let my mind wander and get imaginations going with all kinds of worst-case scenarios or do I cast down every thought and do I put on the garment of praise and worship God in the Holy Spirit? Folks, we've been given the Holy Spirit. We've got to take advantage of Him if we're going to walk in peace and victory because we are His workmanship and God has prepared this path for us, but you have got to walk in it. Nobody but you can do that. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So I want us tonight at the end of this lesson here, I want us to pray together in the Holy Spirit for a few minutes. And even when this video goes off, just spend some time. Let this be a spark plug that starts the momentum of the Holy Ghost in your life. And when you shut this off, just begin to keep on praying in the Holy Spirit. Because really, this is what we have to offer you that matters. Hearing somebody preach a sermon and talk about what you ought to be and what you ought to do and do all of that, that's just words coming granted they may be godly words, but they're not going to change anything. We've got to have encounters with God. When we come together in this church on Sunday, I want to see people have encounters with God. Our church services don't end when I get done preaching. That's just the impetus. That's just to whet people's appetite. That's just to prepare people's hearts. That's just to give them faith to come down here to the front and receive and when I look at these rows of people on Sunday and they're crying and weeping and praying in the Holy Ghost, I understand that I'm a success because God is a success working in the lives of people. There's nobody that can replace his voice. Nobody can replace his presence. There's nobody that can give you peace like God himself. That's what we want tonight. Amen. I love what Jesus said in Luke 21, 15. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all of your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. So we need to realize that the Holy Spirit in us is greater than any argument, any person, any demon, any principality, anything that could come against us. 
Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So when you pray in the Spirit, God's giving you a mouth and a wisdom that your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. You know, we, we don't survive on cleverness and, and, and just, just thinking that we know everything and have every answer in this book. We, do, we, don't, we don't thrive and are not victorious because of intellectual superiority. It's Jesus said to his men that he called, and they were fishermen and tax collectors and just common men. He said, listen, when the Holy Spirit is on you, when I've gone and I've sent my Holy Spirit, I'm going to give you this, this mouth, this word. I'm going to give you an anointing. And, and he said, I'll be with you. He said, don't even take thought about what you're going to say. They'll pull you in before the Sanhedrin. They'll put you before the high council. They're going to accuse you. They're going to say a lot of things. But the Holy Spirit, who's living on the inside, will come bubbling up out through your mind and through your mouth, and I'll give you a mouth that they won't be able to resist. Amen. They looked on Stephen. They saw his face glowing like the face of an angel. Why? Because they couldn't resist the words that he spoke. That's the place we've got to come into as God's people. Amen. Instead of being intimidated and harassed by this situation, let's look to the Lord tonight and let's just praise him and let's say, Lord, we've got our confidence and our trust in you tonight. Amen. So right now we're going to pray together and we're going to pray in tongues together. We're going to pray in the Holy Ghost together. We're going to speak mysteries as we pray in tongues. God's going to minister to you. I want you to open your mind up and say, Lord, whatever you say to me tonight, I'll take a note of it. I'll, I'll put it into my heart. I'll practice it in my life tomorrow. Don't be surprised if God drops things into you as we begin to pray together tonight. Don't, don't be surprised that the Lord will give you something, show you something, tell you something you need to do or say or something that you need to prepare for because Jesus said he will guide you into all truth and the Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. And so tonight we're going to pray together in the Holy Spirit. I want you just to lift your hand along with my hand. I want you to just begin to praise the Lord. Just say, Lord, I love you and I praise you tonight. I worship you. I adore you. I thank you. And as you feel the presence of the Lord come in, you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost and let God's prayer language get its work done in and through you and for you. Right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we worship you, Lord. We praise you tonight as your people, Lord. As your Pentecostal believers, oh God, we worship you tonight. Minister to your people tonight. Lay your hand upon your people tonight. Give a voice to hear the, the, that they can hear your words tonight, oh God. I bind and rebuke the spirit of fear right now and I command faith to come alive in the hearts of God's people in the name of Jesus. He did a yashanda and a boyate a key kaye or no 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 bohai. He did a bayashanda bayanda la 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 bahosanda bayoro no basso. Speak, Lord, for your servants here tonight. Speak, Lord, for our vessels are open, our ears are open, God. He ala la la boshanda be a la 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 bakonda boye. He candea to yanda la la bahanda la la bashande. Transform your people into people of power. Oh, in the mighty name that's above every name. 
Oh, let every person feel the presence of God right now. Feel the Holy Ghost as he's coming right now into your house, into your car, wherever you are. Feel his presence. Let his presence flow down through your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, we claim your victory. We claim your peace. We claim your anointing tonight. Praise God and praise God, praise God, praise God. If you'll abide in the Holy Ghost, you're going to abide in power. You're going to come through every test, flying colors, because God is not about to drop his people. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Be strong in the Lord, saints. Keep praying in the Holy Ghost. Victory's coming. Amen and amen. God bless you, everyone. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.